Um, and this is kind of the principle of what we're doing. So in this study, we're recruiting people between age 65 and 80, 3,000 people. And in a double blind placebo control trial, we're going to have a primary outcome that is the time to incidence of any major uh, age-related disease. Again, cardiovascular disease, MCI and dementia, or death. This is the outcomes that the FDA wants. In addition, we have other things that we have to do in order to show really the biomarkers that are changing because you cannot do every time like a phase three trial and fail 95% of the time. You really want to test in few weeks or few months if something affects aging so that you can have higher chances of doing a trial well after that. So what we want to do is to prevent the following. You know, with time, the incidence of age-related diseases is increases, but those are the incidence of comorbidities, how many diseases you start accumulating. And what we have we hope to do with metformin that we're going to flatten that. Metformin will target aging and those comorbidities will be uh, stopped. I want to go back to COVID and tell you that there are nine studies around the world, I think there's more now, showing that patients with metfor on metformin had decreased hospitalization and decreased death. I'll give you uh, the most recent example. This is a study that showed that this is the odds ratio. So if the odds ratio are increased, it means that there, there's more risk of dying. It's from one to 10. And between zero and one is if something is prevented. So when you look in the diabetic population, those who are older than 50 or 70 have you know, about five times more chances of dying as we saw before. White versus non-white didn't matter that much. Male more than female, obese more than non-obese. Hypertension didn't make any difference in this study. Whether you're treated with insulin or not made no difference in this study. But if you were on metformin, you had a decrease on 67% on dying. A similar, this is a study on mortality in nursing homes. And those are the people who are dying, whether they are on diabetes drug, metformin, other diabetes drug, or insulin. So those guys, no matter how they're treated, they're dying much more than those who are insulin, who have basically half of the mortality or a little bit better than half the mortality. So kind of a missed opportunity. What other drug has effect of over 50% in decreases to increasing mortality of COVID? It shouldn't happen the, the next time. We have to be ready. I also want to say that this is really too bad that not enough people know about the biology of aging and don't understand that aging is different than the diseases and should be treated differently. The CDC published the risk for severe illness, okay? And the risks are here. And aging doesn't appear here, although aging is by far much greater risk than any of those for death. Not only that, they went on and said what might be an increased risk for severe disease. And still aging is not here. And when you ask them, they said, well, you know, there is no therapy for aging. Well, first of all, it's fault. Second, you know, what's the therapy to sickle cell disease? Uh, not, not everything here has a therapy. We're talking about risk. So we have to recognize it better because the next epidemic, if you target the aging, 
you're going to have so much less mortality and the whole idea of death and closing the economy and all that could be really, really much, much different. I wanna talk about the challenges. The mechanism for aging and longevity are similar in animals and humans. I haven't shown you this data, but this is unlike most of diseases. Our animal models, usually they do not represent the diseases we have. The Alzheimer's models are not, and that's why they were not successful. The diabetes model are really not the diabetes model of diseases and so on and so forth. Aging is conserved through evolution, all animals, their hair, their uh, skin, the diseases, they all happen with age. It, genetic studies as in centenarians are part of the way that we're going to increase and in, in, in develop drugs. We talked about biological and, chro and chronological changes and the importance of biomarker that we'll get from TAME in order to see that we have somehow, we can measure uh, aging like we measure cholesterol and that aging can be targeted in a clinical trial. As to, for the future, I, I wanna make an important point. You can take a egg of a 50 year old woman and a sperm of a 70 year old man and fertilize them. And what you'll have is what's called the blastocytes. Those cells will start dividing. And although we know the age of the parents in those cells, aging has been erased. We all started at zero. We are not accumulating the age of our parents. We have discovered in our body how to do that. And now we're working on trying to understand how we can do it. So maybe we can erase aging from time to time in us in a profound way and really find a way to live healthier and to live longer. I also want to say that, you know, it's not only about aging. Think of it this way. People who are survival of cancer therapy, because they got radiation or, or chemotherapy, they are aging rapidly because of this treatment, which is really increasing some of the hallmarks of aging. They need help. You know, in particular, young people, they even age faster. People who age, have HIV get their diseases 10 years before other ages. I would say even uh, poor people or uh, people in wheelchair, certainly they cannot walk, they cannot eat, they need some help. Poor people who cannot exercise and cannot diet and, and they die early, maybe they can get some help. Certainly, if we want to go to Mars, we need to stop aging because there's no way to get there without us stopping aging. You'll get cancer on the way there. You'll never make it back. So this is important for humanity to solve and to solve it as soon as possible. There's a very famous song in the United States by Jim Croce. It's called Time in the Bottle. And and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to buy time in the bottle because if I could make the days last forever, if words could make wishes come true, I'd save every day like a treasure. And then again, I would spend them with you. So we could spend more time together in peace and happiness and good health. And I hope that this will come uh, soon. I think we are uh, catching a wave and this will be really great. So thank you for uh, listening.